Joining me now is the Ukrainian Charge d'Affaires to Canada, the representative here in Canada, Andrei Bukvich. Of course, sir, you were in Parliament today for that extraordinary address from the battle zone from your president, President Zelensky. Um, it was a very personal but purposeful address. He wants more help. Uh, can you, your reaction to the speech and your reaction for the plea to close the skies over Ukraine? Uh, you're absolutely right. President speak, spoke today not as a diplomat, not as a politician, but, but rather as a commander in chief, as the citizen, the responsible citizen who stands with his people and fights against Russian invaders. Uh, presidents try uh, to call for emotion uh, by everyone who uh, was, he, was listening to him. He mentioned a number of places across Canada that everybody knows. And the uh, president asked to imagine what would happen if those places would be hit by missiles at some day. Uh, and what would you tell your kids, your family, trying to explain early in the morning what happens and why explosions are all around. So it was very emotional speech, but I think it could be easily understood and felt by uh, every person that care, care about his family, about his house, neighborhood, city, and his country. So uh, I think that it absolutely resonates what Canadians, members of parliament, prime minister feels uh, at the moment about Ukraine. We do understand that uh, a lot of should be done to still to support Ukraine. And do uh, there is a rationale behind this decision not to open uh, no-fly zone over Ukraine from different for, for different reasons. Still, uh, and a lot of uh, MPs, leaders of parties, uh, including Prime Minister, mentioned that we still have to explore any option available to protect civilians from shelling and to support Ukraine in all ways possible. Because the victory of Ukraine in this battle would mean a lot, not, not only for Ukrainians, but for Canada, United States, uh, the West, the NATO, the EU. It would be a very inspiring victory, absolutely stating the democratic way is much more better than any dictatorship or authoritarian states. Ms. Brookvich, you saw the prime minister, the foreign affairs minister who's on this program, say specifically, despite the persuasive and passionate plea, uh, putting, uh, closing the skies in Ukraine is a red line. NATO will not do that. They're not going to risk the escalation. But I did hear, and I wonder your reaction, uh, the, the interim leader of the Conservative Party say they need to protect the skies for humanitarian corridors. How did you interpret what she said there? And what is your response to the Canadian government alignment with NATO that is still a no-fly zone is still a no-go zone. When I said that we have to explore, altogether explore every possible option to help civilians, to help Ukrainians, to shelter people from cynical airstrike, uh, I meant that uh, NATO, G7, can consider no-fly zone on the limited area in Ukraine where there are major humanitarian corridors where, uh, where millions of civilians who can suffer from airstrikes and missiles. And I think this is possible because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, to, to make only rational calculation because this what Putin expects and wants and looks, uh, is looking forward. He thinks that he challenge, he threatens the West and nobody would even dare considering uh, no fly zone over Ukraine. So I think though the arguments for full-fledged no fly zone over the whole territory of Ukraine is probably something uh, that would be even a very complicated military exercise. No fly zone over uh, part of Ukrainian territory will be uh, a very good response to Putin's challenge. It would not... Uh, uh, it would not lead to any escalation because uh, if Putin would want to uh, to punish a sort of uh, the West for its support of Ukraine, 
he, he can do it right away, right now, because uh, Ukrainian soldiers are fighting with javelins, with NLOs, with Carl Gustav anti-tank system. So uh, Western uh, weapon is already there. So I think the idea of opposition mm. leader is uh, worth considering and should be on the table in all NATO uh, member, uh, member countries' capital. Okay, that's interesting. Last question to you, sir. We, we, while the president was speaking, we had heard that he had also said today that he accepts the fact that NATO will, or that Ukraine will not be a part of NATO. That had been a key Russian demand. NATO has said that's not up to Russia to decide. Can you tell us, was President Zelensky simply stating the obvious, Ukraine is not part of NATO? Or was he saying, we will not be part of NATO, we accept that, and that was some type of negotiating olive branch or some kind of gesture to Russia to in some way begin some peace talks? Uh, well, indeed, Ukraine has been knocking on NATO doors for quite a while already. The uh, aspiration of membership in NATO is written in the Ukrainian constitution. Majority of Ukrainians support this uh, decision, this foreign policy decision in uh, Ukraine's application. At the same time, so far, we have not heard any response behind the door. This is true and everybody knows that. Uh, but the last 16 days absolutely proved that the number one guarantee to Ukraine's security is Ukrainian armed forces uh, with uh, state-of-the-art complicated weapons, with uh, resolution and courage to protect the country and protect civilians. And I think that whatever the uh, formula for security uh, security guarantees of Ukraine would be, it would definitely conclude Ukrainian armed forces with the modern weapon, number one, uh, uh, no, number one position. And then I think presidents uh, trying to estimate what happens uh, in Brussels, in NATO headquarters, in Washington, he is making decision and trying to understand what are other possible options, uh, not excluding NATO, but what are po other possible options that would guarantee Ukraine's security? This is very important because, uh, let's be clear, no deal, no peace deal or negotiation with Russia is possible. As everybody knows, uh, agreements with Russia, uh, uh, agreement with Russia is not worth paper it is written on. So basically, we need a lot of stakeholders in peace deal, and I think this is exactly the area where Canada can uh, prove its leadership. Mm. All right. Uh, it's fascinating, as you say. There's a long road ahead, but what a historic day today to hear President Zelensky speak to uh, a... a um, our entire parliament, the Senate and the members of parliament, and, and you were there, of course, that standing ovation, um, many more conversations to come. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.